I've got um, several questions about the Boy Scout logo, so I thought I would do a little bit um, to make sure everybody knew what was expected in terms of this. Um, on screen at the moment, I have my part one, which is the fleur de -lis and the eagle. Uh, and at this point, it's ready to go into the part two stuff. So the um, basics of the, obviously the part one is that you place the graphic to use as a reference, you lock it and you build all the individual pieces. Um, at the moment, I have all of my own layers. They may not stay that way, but I've got ultimately mine is going to be saved as two separate pieces because it's sort of easier to build the eagle and the fleur de -lis with its nice separate layers and sort of get that to the point that it needs to be and finished and then place the second graphic, which is the part two, and go from there. So that's the stage that I'm going to demo right now. Um, the approach that I'm going to take with this is that um, I am now going to show you how to go about placing that second graphic. I got a specific question on that one, so I'm going to show you some of the ins and outs of that. At the moment, I'm on the original source image layer, which in my case I named source image, uh, and I'm going to, and I'm specifically got that one highlighted for a reason. I'm going to click on the new layer button. Um, because I had the source image layer as my selected one, the new layer is inserted directly above that one. If I had been anywhere else in the layer stack, this still would have worked, but I would have had to rearrange the layers later. This keeps me from having to do that rearrangement step. Uh, I'm going to do File in Place and um, go to wherever that one is, and that's my big question at the moment. Okay, mine is just on the desktop. Um, and I'm going to click and I'll get the graphic in here. Now obviously mine wasn't in the center, none of that stuff. So uh, I'm going to try to get it sort of positioned okay. Obviously there's a scale difference. I know I'll have to deal with that one. But once I get it sort of centered on the screen, I can lock that one. Now what happens is I can't see this one and the original one at the same time. That's a known issue. So if it bothers you, if you have an issue with it, just know that you're going to need <clears throat> the newer graphic on top of the older one if you need to be able to see those elements. So I'm going to turn off my original source image layer. Don't need it anymore. And I'm going to call my new one Part B so I can recognize the difference between them at a quick glance in the layer palette. Um, and I'm ready to work from here. Now, if you will notice, my the logo parts that I've drawn and so forth are considerably larger than um, they need to be in the Part B. They're all currently, as they should have been for creation purposes, on separate layers. That may actually be a little bit cumbersome going forward. So this is part of what I like to do as I'm working here, and this is part of also why I tend to save mine as part one, part two. I'm going to unlock all of the stuff where I did the drawings. I'm going to select all of it at the same time. Every My other elements, my source images are locked, so I can do a control A or select all, and I'll get all the pieces regardless of the layers that they're on. So that control A. Um, and I'm going to copy them, which is control C. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to paste into the new layer. All of that stuff, all of the stuff that I copied just a minute ago is going to come in there as a single element on the same layer. Just makes it a little bit easier. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to lock all of the layers except for that new one that I just created and turn all of those off visually because I don't need to see them anymore. I just need the layer that I pasted all of the eagle and fleur de -lis stuff into. Um, because now, by doing the copy and the paste, I've united it all into a single layer. The original stuff's protected if I needed to come back to it for any reason, but it's going to be easier to scale and position this guy uh, as a single piece. So, back to the steps. Select all, which is Control A, <clears throat> or Command A if you're on a Mac, and then new layer, and then paste. You get all of it on the single layer. You lock all the original drawing layers back again. The only layer right now that I have unlocked is that new one that I created, which is my layer eight. Um, I'm going to rename name this as center. 
if I could type correctly. Oh, good Lord. All right. Um, and now that's, again, the full fleur de -lis. I could group it. I don't have to group it, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and group it so I can quickly grab it. It's all in a layer together. It makes grabbing it as a unit easier, even if it weren't grouped. But grouping is good best practices. So object group. And now I'm going to move it up and figure out what I need to scale it down to. Now, in as much as the scaling is concerned, it's going to need to be proportional. So make sure you're holding the shift down if you're scaling manually or if you're using the scale tool that you're doing it uniform. Uh, but regardless, it's got to get smaller. So I am scaling mine downward. I'm holding my shift and my option. So it's scaling from the center and it's scaling in both directions at once. And I'll just keep going until this is the right size. And obviously I went a little bit too far. The good news is when you're dealing with um, vector, if you have to scale more than once, you haven't lost data. This would be a much bigger deal if I overscaled, if I were in Photoshop, for example. Um, so I've scaled it until it is about the right size. And you could use the scale tool to do this too, but you're going to have to guesstimate multiple times how much smaller it needs to go. But that's pretty close. Um, so it's a little bit off, but again, I can keep tweaking it, but you get the idea. My main issue that I'm actually seeing is that this um, stroke weight on the fleur de lis seems a little heavy, and I would probably want to fix that and go down. I don't think it's, I didn't have my settings um, so that my strokes would scale. And that is actually, I'm going to go backward because I want to get back up to that. I want to show you the difference. So I'm going to go back to my big one. Uh, so if you're in the same boat that I am, I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side version so that you see what the heck I was just talking about. Because it can be an issue for everybody. All right, so... I'm going to scale this without changing the settings first. And now I'm going to check my settings on my scale tool. And I've double clicked on the scale tool to open it. Scale strokes and effects in my case was turned off. Even though I wasn't scaling with the scale tool, I was physically adjusting the scale of the option. It was obeying essentially these rules. Because this wasn't checked in my case, the stroke weight that I had set for the fleur de lis, the outline of the eagle, and so forth was not adjusted along with the size. So it is weird now. The claws are getting funky, the fleur de lis is too thick, all that kind of stuff. So I have clicked on scale strokes and effects. And in general, you also want corners to be scaled. Um, if you've done any corner radii on your uh, rounded rectangles or anything like that. So I'm going to click on OK for this one. It used the proportions that I did for the one above, um, or eh, not exactly, but somewhere in the whatever the last scaling I did was, it did that. Um, and so just to give you a further idea, I'm going to try to get it a little closer to the one above it. They're in the ballpark of the same size now, but they look really different because, for one, the stroke, in effect, was scaled, the one on the right, and for the one on the left, it wasn't. So the fleur de -lis looks weird, the outline of the eagle looks weird, the claws look weird, and all that kind of stuff. So if you're running into that problem, open up your scale palette by double-clicking and check to make sure scale corners and scale strokes and effects is set for yours. I'm going to stop this, restart the video, uh, for the next part, but this hopefully gets you through at least the placing of the graphic and the positioning and scaling of that um, eagle and flirtily.